before I introduce Jonathan up to the, the stage with me, just to uh, set a, a few um, a few notes. So if you have any questions for Jonathan throughout our conversation in the Q&A area on, on the right hand side uh, next to the screen, please add them in there. Um, this is having spoken to Jonathan on Monday over the phone. This is going to be a really valuable conversation, whether you run your own company with, with teams, whether you're a team leader within a company. Um, it's going to be very, very valuable. And to set a bit of context about Jonathan's career itself, having spent 20 years in the military, assistant to the head of the British Army, chief of staff of the largest brigade and commanded on three operational tours. In the business world, he's been he spent 20 years as the MD of a PLC. Alongside that, he spent 10 years running his own company. So he knows a lot about leading teams. He knows a lot about business. He, he hasn't stopped learning. He's a recent graduate of one of Harvard's uh, lead, leader, leading leadership programs. Um, he's also an MBE for his services to leadership in training UN leaders who helped prevent the East Timor massacre. Um, he's a podcast host. His inspiring leadership podcast is in the top five of, of business leadership uh, podcasts on Apple. Um, but uh, I will introduce uh, Jonathan up to the stage. Um, so bear with me one second, Jonathan. We look forward to having you here. Hello, Bradley. Can you Hello, Jonathan. Yes, you're coming through loud and clear. Hopefully you can hear me as well. I can indeed. And I hope the reality isn't too disappointing for people. <laughs> <laughs> You are there, haven't I? Um, but, uh, <laughs> thanks very much for your time, Jonathan. No, and no, no, as no. I said, we had a really good call on Monday, so I'm really looking forward to diving into this. But I've said a little bit of context about your background. But firstly, we'll, we'll focus on the military side. Um, so, what was your pathway into the military and your journey in the military to get to where you were in a in a snapshot? Yeah, um, my, my father was fleet air arm. He was a fast jet pilot. Uh, he was killed when I was three and mother brought three kids up on her own. And um, I always wanted to to be somewhat like my father. So I, I was I was awful at sea. So I decided to join the army and um, had a pretty, a pretty, a very good career. But then I went to be an instructor at the military academy. And having been outstanding, I suddenly was average and I had a bit of a crisis. I thought, you know, I didn't know I was average. There were people who are much better than me. So I reached out to find out about the man I never knew, my father, who was uh, killed when I was three. And I learned a lot from other leaders. And so I made a calling to learn about leadership, study it. I, I'm dyslexic, but I read about uh, 80 audio books a year on leadership, neuroscience, health, well-being. And, and also I interview all these different leaders, CEOs and generals and managing directors, entrepreneurs. And I learn from them and pass it on to others. And it's one of my greatest things is, is I really enjoy coaching leaders at all levels from startup to small businesses, medium sized to help them lead others well. Mm, absolutely. And into your military career, if, if you could share a couple of tours that you face with, particularly relevant with today and, and a lot of work that you're doing at the moment is around crisis management and leadership leading mm. through a crisis. And mm. we are in a we are in a crisis in the business world in, in that respect. So what were some of your tours that were more crisis related? Yeah, um, two come to mind. And then also some time when I was in PwC, I could talk about after we talked about these two. Um, East Timor, there was a horrendous massacre going on uh, by local militias, uh, raping and murdering uh, of various villages. And the Australians had to go in. They wanted some help. We'd been in Bosnia. I'd been a company commander in Bosnia, just keeping the peace after the war there. And um, so they asked me to put a brigade headquarters together. And I think the lessons for relevant for today is be ready and be balanced for what we call subs, sudden unexpected bombs that come in. So just when things are going well, that's the time to prepare for all the, what if this happens? What if that happens? Have we got, have we got anything planned for that? Um, didn't see it coming. I didn't. I was just busy with my day job, and they they asked me to leave a small half my brigade headquarters. There's about 160 staff behind, and train up 120 other people from around the UK to go to Australia, train them up with the Americans, Canadians, things like that. The other lesson I think from that was pivot and be ready to quickly switch. Tempo is a thing like you're moving at speed one direction, and you have to change and shift and move at speed in another direction. I mean, you've all probably had to do this where. You might have had an office and a day later, you have to have everybody working from home with kit, laptops, all that kind of stuff and do calls and everything from there. 
and and the why you've got to be very clear about the why you're doing something then you have the what and then you have the how so east timor it went very well that's when i got my mbe from the queen after the way we'd worked with the other nations but it, it, i wasn't really prepared for it but i got to the place where i'd used a coach approach to leading people so i wasn't micromanaging it doing it myself i can talk about a coach approach later but it gave me capacity to think strategically so when a new opportunity came in i didn't turn it away and say no we can't do east timor i said yeah okay i'll do that uh, and the second one is the falklands um i was so excited to, i wanted to be involved in the falklands i was a young lad um i was probably about 19 or 20 at the time in uh in yes 20 in 1982 when the falklands invasion happened i wanted to go with the scots guards who i was serving with but I wasn't uh, ready. I was still in training at the time. Thank God I missed it because many of my colleagues So you know, beware what you wish for. Many of my colleagues came back with PTSD or legs blown off or half their brain shot away. And, and it wasn't pleasant. But I think the thing we learned about from that is they weren't prepared. They were doing public duties, marching up and down in front of Buckingham Palace in their smart rig tunics and their bearskins. And then suddenly they had to be in Wales and then on a ship going to the South Atlantic. And so crisis brings unexpected leaders forward. And as they went up Mount Tumbledown uh, against a very strong force of 5th Marine uh, Battalion of the Argentinians, uh, unsurprising leaders came forward. Some who you thought were good and looked good in, uh, in when everything was going well were awful and let the side down and, and cried and were, were shaking. Others who you didn't, you'd written off came to the front. So in this crisis, look at your organ organs. Who's actually reacted well? Who's been a good natural leader? They might be quite unexpected. Lift them up, give them an opportunity, maybe jump a couple of ranks. That's that's my experience. Yeah, that's a really nice point to make, and it kind of leads into the business world. And what was your transition like from the military world into the business world? And how did that how how did that work for you? And how did that come about? Yeah, um, I was fascinated by business and um, realized I wanted to go into business. I, I'd been, as you mentioned kindly assistant to the head of the army, what they call the ADC or the military assistant to the head of the army. I learned a lot from him, but I looked around and I thought, do I want to be one of them? No. Am I good enough to be one of them? Probably not. Do I fit in? No, I probably don't. So if that's not for me, where do I want to go? And it's those three, three overlapping circles, what I love doing, unique talents, and what does the market want? And so I did my MBA uh, through the Open University in my spare time when I had two small children. Um, and that was really very tough, but it was worth it because I met loads of people. I worked for the army management consultants, which they told me was not a good career move. I said, no, no, I assure you, it is a good career move. I just hadn't told them my career was not within the army. I was gonna leave after 20 years. Um, probably because I, I was doing okay, but I hadn't reached my potential and it wasn't really me. Whereas this, coaching CEOs, leaders, top teams, MDs, that's what my calling was. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I think I then went into PwC was my first job. Um, which was great, but I arrived in the middle of a crisis. And no sooner had I arrived than they shut the doors. No one else was let on board. I was The portcullis came down literally just behind my rear of my ass, and, and nobody else joined. A friend of mine was about to join, and bang, he was up against the portcullis, couldn't, couldn't get in. And then they started to salami slice, and the, the first wave of redundancy, we thought, okay, that's it. And then six months later, another wave of redundancy. And six months later, another wave of redundancy. Now, luckily, because I was cheap and I'd come in early, I survived. And I found what they needed, and I found an answer to their problem. And that's, uh, as you think about your own businesses, don't go, give me some work. I'll do anything for anybody. No, 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 no. Find your clients. Find out what their pain point is and give them excellent service above and beyond. I, I'm finding... The world of coaching is much tougher. Many firms are chopping it, but they need leadership in times of crisis more than ever. So I'm actually getting some good bits of work, but I have to work twice as hard and the fees are not as much. But I'm keeping, I'm keeping a link with all my clients, even if I just do a couple of sessions for people pro bono or at lower rates. Then when the good times come, they'll remember that you were there for them in the bad times. Mm, yeah, we're seeing a lot of that at, at the moment. And and what are you what are you seeing as the main principles that you applied in the military that are being that are able to be applied within a business leader manager um, in in the business world? Yeah, I, I, the first thing I'd come up with is is think strategically. Um, whatever the size of your business, whether it's you and three others, or you and ten of you, or there's twenty, a hundred, whatever it might be, two hundred. 
you're doing the day-to-day -day stuff, but actually, you, as the leader of that organization, you're paid to make three decisions a year. You've got to work out what those three are and make the right decisions, but you, you're really paid for that. Are you paid to be busy or are you paid to think? You're paid to think. So you've got to think strategically. What is the new normal now? And embrace that and change and pivot. And, and, and don't wait for someone else to tell you the answer. You know, like, for example, there's, um, you know, different loans you can get in businesses, C-bills, and it was a complete uh, usury. They were just trying to rip you off and charge you 6.7% for three years. Forget that. You know, 3.25 was what I was paying for the loans before. But then now, great, they've come in with a bounce back loan. My bank isn't doing that. So I've got to pivot and think who might do that. So apply to HSBC. So you have to be much more agile. And I think embrace the remote working. I am actually really getting used to working from my home here in Lincolnshire, whereas I've got an office in London that's closed at the moment. There's no one there. Um, the second point is, is uh, humanity and humility. You see more of people on videos. You see their homes. You see small dogs jumping up, child crawling all over a client. Um, and that makes you much more human and people can build trust. And, and finally, with the people you have, do you care? Do you really, really care? Showing that you care, having quick connections with people or people who have got mental health issues or whatever it might be, those are things to, those are things to, to help them with. Fantastic. That was really, really useful. And I'm sure people will take, uh, take them away with them. Um, we've got some um, questions coming in, which is good, and we'll, we'll come to them very shortly. Um, I mentioned the, the Harvard Leadership Program. How, how did, I mean, it's, a, it's something that I see a lot in the books that I read with leaders and the podcasts that I listen to that they never stop learning. And that's a really, it's a really good example. So how did that come about? What, what did that involve? Yeah, so I'm a visiting professor of leadership at Cass Business School bit of a phony plastic title visiting professor. I'm, I'm not a real professor. I'm just, I'm just human. But uh, it, it was quite interesting because I taught on the exec MBA program and, and I learned a lot from that. And funny if that's how I got invited by LinkedIn to do a LinkedIn live weekly session on inspiring leadership in crisis. So if you come onto my site on five o'clock on a uh, Tuesday, you'll get some very interesting CEOs, generals. We've got the deputy head of the army next Tuesday. We just had the CEO of a charity called Scope um uh, CEOs of different businesses the CEO for the foreign office uh came on very interesting people some scientists talking about sequencing of the RNA with the virus and stuff like that um but I, I wanted to 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 get you know extra I suppose extra badge on the shoulder of going to Harvard um do you know what it was interesting I met 70 different people from all over the world from Colombia and all sorts funny enough the quality of the teaching was disappointing and um, it was a bit ego ridden, uh, thinking that they were God's gift. I I'm pleased I did it. Um, and I learned, you always learn something, even when it's not good, you learn something. But I think the greatest lesson that I learned is about the incomplete leader and the complete team. So all of you listening, and I was pleased to be able to join a few of the tables, different businesses and things like that. Remember, you're never the complete product. I'm certainly not. I've made way more mistakes than you've ever made. I just learn a lot from them. Hopefully don't repeat them, but I sometimes do. <laughs> But, but you've got to get a complete team around you, uh, metaphorically people who are two inches taller than you in their specialist areas. So you can stay on the balcony or at the bridge looking about five miles out and that your team can be down in the engine getting things working. But you have to be able to go down and help out when's required. But don't get stuck in the bowels of your Titanic. Otherwise, you definitely will hit your iceberg, not mm. because you weren't watching out for it from five miles before. Absolutely. Great. We'll go to some questions from uh, from attendees, Jonathan. We've got some good ones coming in. Uh, voted to the top here is from Noel Preston. And without commenting on the politics, more so the person, what are your thoughts on how Boris is doing in the current situation as a leader? And if you were able to give him any advice, what would what would that be? Yeah, I, I would actually love to be Boris's coach. Um, <laughs> it would be a bit of a challenge um, having um, one of my clients worked with him when he was in the Foreign Office uh, directly. Um, Boris is very clever, um, and what he has done is that he's done that analogy of uh, he realizes he's the, he wouldn't admit it, but he realizes he's the incomplete leader, and he's created a complete team. He's trying to create a good team around him. So Mark Sedwell, who worked in MI5 and MI6, is a true leader. He is the permanent secretary. I had him in one of my groups at Windsor Castle. Inspiring guy. He's the guy behind the scenes who's making a lot of these things happen because politicians are politicians. They're not strategic thinkers. They're not natural leaders. They're, they're often trying to do something with this, a cause and they believe in it and they want to make a difference. 
but they've not really had any training development. So I think uh, Boris is doing the best he can. He, he was um, a little foolish to say, I'll go and shake the hands and meet everybody who's got COVID-19 and then he gets it. You know, that's a bit of an own goal. However, he then becomes a bit of a hero because he survived, thank God, he survived through. So he's not a great leader. He's written books on Churchill. He's trying to base himself on that. But he's the best that we've got. I certainly wouldn't want Theresa May, and I certainly wouldn't want Corbyn. Um, I'm not sure about uh, the new Labour leader. He, he is a, quite a clever lawyer. Um, I think he'd be OK. But I think Boris is the best we've got at the moment. But we've got a lot of things to, to sort out. We're behind the power curve, unfortunately. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. And a couple that have been voted up to the top. Uh, Marlena O'Donnell asked, who is the most inspiring leader in your opinion and why? So who, who do you uh, who do you aspire to look up to? OK, um, I, I think I picked two. Deanna Oppenheimer, who was the CEO of Barclays Retail Bank. She's now the um, uh, she, she's now the chairman of Hargreaves Lansdowne. I'm working with her and her board at Hargreaves Lansdowne. Uh, and she cares about her people. She's quite feisty. Um, she had a, a very bullying boss when she was in, in Barclays and she kept the shit off her team. She really cared about her own team, but she calls things out. She's not afraid to call things out. So she is an inspiring leader. I'm going to get her on my podcast in a couple of weeks time. Um, and the other person is Lord Dannett, General Lord Dannett, who was my commanding officer when I was a company commander. Quiet. He's an introvert. Uh, strong value set. Really good listener. It isn't about us being gobby and talking too much. Actually, sh shut the F up and, and listen to people and learn from them. Um, but really strong value set. And he could listen to us all and then go, right, this is what I hear is the main point, And this is what we're going to do. Are you with it? Thumbs up. Not so sure or against it. And then he'd get more of us to what would it take to make it a thumbs up to get our commitment into it. Uh, mm. Those are two. Excellent. Um, Claudia from, from our own team at Network My Club, uh, which is more important when going into a leadership role, experience or attitude? Oh, I love that one. Uh, knowledge, skills and attitude, KSA. Um, knowledge and skills can be trained, but attitude, if their attitude sucks, don't hire them. And it's always hire for attitude. Their attitude will define their altitude, how high they'll get on. So you've got to have someone who has a good positive attitude, team player, uh, positive, proactive, makes it happen, cares about others, emotionally intelligent. You can train them up on the knowledge and skills. I mean, clearly, if they're going into, I don't know, um, quite a few people here in financial services and, and uh, insurance and things, if they know nothing about insurance, they go, I'm really enthusiastic. That's clearly a bad hire. But I'm talking about if it's a decision on that, always attitude every time. Good question. Yes. Tim Rylett asks, what do you feel is the most common mistake made by people when trying to lead in difficult times? Well, I think, Tim, that's a good question. Probably the mistakes that I've made. I, I think I thought it was all about me uh, when I think about some of the blunders I made as a young officer. And look at me, I'm enormous. And and that doesn't work at all. Um, I, I changed around for that one. And I used the coach approach, which is like... Um, many people think they have to be Superman. They rip off their, their T-shirt and they've got a big S labeled on, tattooed on their chest and they go, look at me. No, no, it's the incomplete leader leading the complete team. So have an army of giants, surround yourself with good quality people and then empower them, ask them, involve them and admit when you don't know. And I think when people are wrong and they won't admit they're wrong and you're heading off like lemmings over a cliff, go, guys, look, I apologize. I made a mistake. I need your help now. I'm, I'm at the limit of what I can do. What do you think? Now, when you're leading people in battle up Mount Tumbledown, you can't go, I'm not sure what to do. What do you think? You just have to keep going. But, but that's a, a very unusual situation. In times of crisis, ideas have no rank, all right? Ideas should not have a rank. Don't be attached to your idea. Good ideas flow to the, to the top. So find the best ideas, get people behind it, and then execute and deliver on it and keep doing after action reviews. What worked well, what will make it even better? WWW, EBI, and what have we learned? Mm, a lot of acronyms in there, which is great. Um, and probably time for one more. Richard Hodson asks, what would be uh, your recommended book to start and reading on leadership? So what, what are your, I'd say, what are your best uh, leadership books that you read? God, um, that's a good one. Um, we could send you some, uh, <laughs> this, this one here, written by this guy, a top tips <laughs> on inspiring leadership. But the only reason I say that is at the back, I've got some tips of other books that you should read and audio books. So um, 
drop me a note if you want to know specifically what it is, and I'll I'll happily on on LinkedIn I'll happily give you a recommendation based on what you're particularly looking for. Because I've read so many books and I just keep learning, I could direct you to the specific one which would help you with that question. Thanks. Great. And I now I had I had a look through your uh, your podcast and the guests that you've had on there, and and they've been some incredible people. So uh, uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, as well. 